Hey everyone, welcome back to Doobie Live. My name is Anika and I will be your host today. I hope you're doing well. Um, I am here with Sin today. Hey Sin, how are you doing? <laughs> hey. Um, welcome everyone to the stream. Hi and welcome on in. I see Wade, Carol, Clever in the chat. Hey Clever, how are you doing? Um, Katerina, welcome on in everyone. Let us know where you're joining from and I hope you're having a great Thursday so far. We have Sin over here for day one. Sin <laughs> created this really inspiring um, NASA-inspired images patterns. Wait, patterns? Aren't we doing that today, Sin? Yes, we're doing the pattern section today. But we did some really cool stuff yesterday. Very experimental. Nice. Yeah, if you missed the stream from yesterday, go ahead on both Behance and YouTube. We have replays up over there as well. And if you're joining us on Behance and YouTube, hi and hello. Welcome on in. Um, I just want to give a friendly reminder to all of you all, wherever you're joining us from. We have um, we had Amina El Kabani earlier today for a photography stream. Make sure to check it out. Both replays are available both on both replays. Yes, day one and day two. All of them are available both on Behance and YouTube. Learn how to elevate your photos for small businesses or brands using Lightroom Classic. I know she was editing iPhone photography, which was really inspiring mm -hmm. and fun. Because usually we just think and intimidated by photography in general and think if we don't have a professional equipment, we can't do that. But hey, you can. So make sure to watch the replay. There was also Jack Watson um, hosting the Illustrator Creative Challenges every weekday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. I think Jack is also in chat. So if you have any questions, you can also put them in the Discord, get feedback from our mentors and all of the good stuff. So without further ado, Sin, do you want to introduce yourself? Give us a quick recap sure of the one and yeah. um, also talk about what we're doing today. Yeah, all good stuff. All good stuff. Um, so my name is Sin Lagos. I am a street photographer, graphic designer, among so many really fun stuff. Um, yesterday, we got to experiment with different uh, abstract shapes inspired by NASA's uh, web images and those were really really cool we uh, grabbed some inspirations from the color palettes we grabbed some inspirations from the shapes and um then we went a little wild i think we started making some butterflies at some point it's kind of cool yep. um we played a little bit with typography also and all in all i think we learned a few tools we got familiarized with a few tools on illustrator that can be repurposed in, diff in many different ways Today, we're going to be using some of those different abstract shapes and learn how we can make gigantic patterns with them that you can then utilize for uh, spaces, uh, real life spaces, like for example, wallpapers or um, actually I didn't download a t-shirt, but I downloaded a pillow. I don't know why that was priority in my mind, but that worked out <laughs> that way. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna learn how to mock up those items on Photoshop in a few different ways. Um, and I know that can sometimes be a bit daunting for some. Um, yeah. I definitely found a few ways that worked out for me and I welcome any new ones from the chat. Absolutely, yeah, I'm really excited to get started. I think making mock-ups is also my most favorite part when I'm uh, doing any kind of graphic design. So I'm really pumped for the stream. Uh, let us know in the chat if you guys have ever created something similar, if you've created patterns. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask them in the chat. We have a really supportive community here. So um, yeah, let's let's dive into what we did on day one. Um, are we doing that or are we just straight diving into patterns? Yeah, I think I'm going to showcase a little bit here. I didn't do, um, I didn't slide through here, but I just wanted to yeah. see wanted you guys to see the images that we were inspired by. There's definitely more James Webb Im space images, but these are the ones that I think have gone uh, uh, viral Wired. on the web. And yeah, yeah and it's fairly surprising, but at the same time, not. It's some of the sharpest images uh, outputted. And it's really quite fascinating to be able to see some of these. Um, I know it's been a long time coming. I think we've had this up since this telescope up since the 90s. Uh, with yeah. a few hiccups along the way. And and you can just imagine if you have, you're in the um, craftsmanship of photography, you could just imagine how would you feel if your lens was 
was dirty and you captured, you try to capture it a picture and then it came out blurry and it wasn't quite right. It would hurt your heart, right? Well, yeah. these these are the images post that. And that's pretty yeah. amazing. And I think it's wor- worth applauding. So we grabbed some inspirations. Um, some of these stars were replicated um, in our illustrations here. And you can just see how interesting it is to dive into some um dive into the graphic uh style things and really uh minimize the detail into like basic shapes uh really interesting uh perspective that i actually got from uh my wife she was telling me she doesn't really know how to draw in the way that i know how to draw and i i realized as i was trying to teach her and i realized that it's because we translate things to just smaller and less like less detail just minimal ideas um, so go from something this complex to something a little bit like this, that just just a little bit of repetition can begin to translate that idea uh, into something that is more intriguing and uh, more compelling, right? Now, one single line wouldn't have done that. Definitely mm-hmm. that repetitiveness and not to mention the, the color play. Um, we regarded quite a bit about... Um, the use of light colors versus darker colors and how that can give us a really interesting optical illusion on some of these shapes that begin to start to to look like they're 3D elements. Even though these are created um, in Illustrator, we actually didn't use any 3D uh, rendering or anything like that for this. This is all an optical illusion of using darker and lighter colors um, to kind of emulate that sense of dimension, which, you know, you can kind of just go in there and just really enjoy it because it's like, it's kind of like space in a way. It just goes on forever. Yeah, I love so, that you um, mentioned how the images were blurry first and then it then it transformed over, over two decades, honestly. And wow. uh, it's really fascinating for me to experience this because this is just so inspiring because you were essentially taking such complex imagery and translating it into simpler shapes and forms for anybody to use. And I think that's really, really inspiring and fun. Yeah, so, I um, think so too. I think I'm going to be grabbing some of these and begin creating a few of the uh, pattern elements. I did encourage um, those of you who followed us yesterday that went home and started to play around with this and experiment on your own to yeah. create these shapes into like a square um, uh, dimension just to kind of uh, allow you to uh, create that pattern, uh, which is our next step. So I'm going to grab one of these. Um, I really like this one. I think it's, it ended up kind of being a, a fun result of yesterday's experimentation. And yeah. it's it's sort of like, I think it looks like a like a melted CD from the 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or what did we say? Dali, Dali inspired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to create a new, uh, a, a new document here. Um, mm. I start with like a 1080 by 1080 at the basis. We'll see if that changes down the road, but we're not going to get too technical on that spec. But just knowing that you have a, a fairly high resolution can can be helpful down the road. Yeah. So I'm just going to place I love that this with, in. With Illustrator, it doesn't really matter because you can scale everything up and down. Um, yeah. Yeah. So much, which is it's, essentially really good. Yeah. Very handy. Oh my god, that's that's one of the reasons why we love <laughs> Illustrator, I think. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I have this object selected and I'm working currently under uh, uh, the Essentials workspace, not the Essentials Classic. So if your uh, Illustrator doesn't look quite like mine, just switch that over. Or if you have a custom Illustrator uh, workspace, that's awesome. I love custom stuff. Absolutely. And all of Gotta these. have yeah. sin one, sin two, sin three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing escapes you. <laughs> yep. Um, um yeah. I also have a custom workspace, but I think I mostly use an essentials classic because it has a control bar on top. And um that really helps when there are a lot of things on the artboard or on the side, and then you can't see the properties panel, perhaps. I mean, there's something always oh. hiding it. 
So right. some sometimes I just like using the control bar at the top uh, with the essentials classic because that gives me a lot of options as well without going to the menu bar. Right, so that's, that's, that's interesting. That's handy. Yeah. Which ones we prioritize because we use more yeah. often too. Yeah. So for this one, I'm gonna go into object uh, pattern pattern make, and I know Annika mentioned yesterday she really enjoys this because she gets to kind of provide a. Um, a pattern to her clients and it's fairly easy to make but it yeah. can feel a little bit like wait okay so i made a pattern what else can i do there's def definitely a few ways to customize it so i'm going to make this pattern here and so this panel pops up kind of interesting too uh, let's see if i can zoom in here okay so this panel pops up and we have a few options. So you can see already we've created a form of a pattern and that's just yeah. based on, and I, if you notice also the swatches popped up and you're like, why did that pop up? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so a swatch is already created for you there in case you wanna save it. I'm mm -hmm. gonna get rid of that for now. But yes, we have this and that already looks really interesting. It's a little bit too tightly spaced uh, for my taste. Uh, so yeah. I like to go into uh, this little button here and click size tile to art. Um, sometimes it can get a little bit cumbersome, like, wait, how do I move these guys? Well, size tile to art can give you a little bit more, um, more personalization. So I'm going to just put a random number here. I do wish these numbers were like toggled so I can just toggle between how many options. Yeah. Because I just started to pick my favorite numbers and it's just random. I actually... um, since you mentioned the toggle um, and a bar there, do you ever use the repeat grid for, for making patterns at all? Um, the repeat grid, like just repeating them independently? Yeah. Um, yeah so... I, so uh, once you once you're done with this, we can go through that together. Oh yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a few, a little bit more spacing. I think I want a little bit more spacing on the horizontal side. So let's go into maybe like double that. I love that this this gradient stroke is giving it such a fun effect as well. Even like as the shape moves and transforms, while in the chat also it agrees. While says, "I'm really loving this shape." Yeah. Yeah, me too. I think, yeah, the gradient make, gives it a bit of dimension too here on the darker yeah. sides. Yeah. And so we have this really interesting um, set of options here and we're able to just kind of modify it for ourselves. I also like playing with the tile type. Mm -hmm. And I think that although I really like how organized this looks, it depends if your graphic gets, it looks a little bit more complex. It might be nice to aim for something uh, a pattern that's more organized like this one or yeah. go for something that it's a bit more funky funky being the theme of our project yeah. <laughs> and so this starts to kind of uh look a little bit more cool here break by row or break by column right so row being horizontal columns being vertical we have hex Ooh. so it creates this this um determine boundary around yeah. it and again even with these you can still change that the space distance okay. and so yeah. if yeah because the distance changed quite a bit after that so you can start to see how that ends up looking like together and then we have hex by row so you, you can see a few things are um become like a common uh, variable here it's it's either by row or it's by column so yeah. you do a brick or you do a hex or the most organized of them all you do the Agreed. grid system yeah and so in here already you can begin to name it and um let's name it name it dali's dali's what's your favorite type of tile or the most used that you think do you often make a grid pattern? Um, I think I really en end up using a lot like bricks by row because it mm -hmm. gives it that that level of just being a bit more dynamic. Uh, yeah. But if it's a very simple shape, I use that quite often. Like maybe you just make, you want polka dots. You don't want them all to be straight. Um, yeah. 
right? You can make things like polka dots here, or maybe you want like something like a checker uh, that will immediately create a checker system by just using a square, uh, which is really interesting to just like be able to create a checker right away. Um, so yeah, Brick Sparrow tends to be one of my favorites. Least favorite would be Hex, Hex by Column, because uh, mm -hmm. I think things start to unify a little bit where the, yeah. the eye can't detect it as well. So the pattern can feel chaotic. Yeah. I would recommend it if you were doing like an illustration of flowers or something of the likes, then it makes sense because they embed in a very seamless way where you yeah. can't even see it, the the edges and not detecting it is actually an attribute and it looks much better that way. It's funny you mentioned that because I've made floral patterns before and I chose hex, but I did not think about all of that, but it does make yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's like, I try to organize the method to the madness, right? Just like yeah. a, if I use, if I use this, should I use it trivial, just out of like a trivial choice or should mm -hmm. I start making like a methodology to have everything? If you use it quite frequently, especially, um, yeah. I always kind of uh, sit back and consider if I had to do like a giant amount of these, how would I be making these decisions just to organize my train of thought? So I'm going to be saving this copy. And these these guys up here are kind of hard to detect. I, there's a long time there that I was like, where are, how do I get out of here? Uh, yeah. Right. So there is a button back here uh, that shows you how to go back to cancel it, to save a copy um, because it did create one already. So we can mm -hmm. create, um, say we were to create a copy, then we can call it what we want here to at least CD. Right. New patterns have been added to the swatches panel. Awesome. So we're in the swatches panel. Um, that's always kind of like a tricky thing. I, I Some of these uh, colors are already uh, included in here. And mm -hmm. maybe some of them are part of your swatches. Maybe you want to keep them. But I like to select all unused so that I have a chance to have a visibility of, of the one that I want to keep. And so I'll select that one that I want to keep and then yeah. be able to remove the other ones. Or you can actually view them via a list mm -hmm. and that can give you a, a bit more order to the madness if you want to like, say group the ones that you have created like Dali's and Dali CD, I'm gonna group them here. Oh, cannot group. Yeah, it's it's weird with gradients and um, okay. patterns well, and just <laughs> Just grouping your color palettes will kind of give yeah. you more yeah. order there i think yeah yeah okay i i think that's always interesting to be able to like find where in some softwares you can do something and in others you can't absolutely yeah yeah and another thing that i i, I find that is helpful is to be able to dim the copies if i want to modify this element here for example so I have my copies. You can tell that the copies are the ones around it because you can dim them. And this is the one that's most colorful. Oops. <laughs> that was kind that of- That is uh, so that is so fun. I feel like this would look <laughs> great on, um, like the dim copies effect would look great on a darker background. Um, mm. Especially since you mentioned like a cushion cover design or something that would look great yeah. on, a, yeah, those dim copies would be a fun variation. So this, the, the dim copies kind of give you, uh, an opportunity also to just see, uh, mm -hmm. your, your main shape, the one that is, of course it's in the middle at the moment, but if you were yeah. to kind of lose track of it, you have the ability to go in here and start to like, say, modify it if you want to like make it smaller or make it bigger or change the color palette, you have that opportunity to do that still like there's just we keep talking about um having a workable file right like a non-destructive file so yeah. that you can continue to make choices along the way so if i was to make another uh modification on this one then i should be able to still do that without having to worry that like it's it's just it's done there's no more changes to that yeah. right yeah and you can modify it I kind of like that. I also like that. Yeah. Oh, can't let go. Um, I actually <laughs> left my my uh, color background behind. 
So yeah. what we're going to do, it's like, okay, I made a pattern. So how mm-hmm. can I find that pattern? How can I use that pattern? Right. Um, yeah. I'll just get rid of this guy here. So we're going to grab the rectangle tool mm-hmm. and we're going to, this one has a stroke already, but I want actually the foreground. So let's pick that foreground on the left-hand side. So make sure it yeah. comes to the fore, to the foreground and we're not applying our pattern to a stroke. If that mm-hmm. is what you want to do, that's really interesting. Ooh, that's something else. So this is a gradient uh, selection and right yeah. in the same fashion, we can create, we can select a color, we can select the gradient, but in the same way, you can also select a pattern. So that starts to kind of apply to anything I want. Um, and then what's interesting here is that you want to be able to then maybe zoom out a little bit and start to see some of these patterns. Let's see, marquee tool. If I was to do it this way, it might be a better way of showing it. You can see how it goes on forever. And then if you want to make sure these patterns match, you might want to make sure that these edges don't end up being sort of flailing like this. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do like you think to. We can we can do that with like spacing. Is that what? Oh, it is? I I like to kind of close in that boundary box mm-hmm. so that it and usually I select both at the same time. I didn't do that here, but just so that it it closes that out. And sometimes you yeah. you'll you'll touch it and you'll see that oh wait but that but that just makes it smaller. Um, if you hold like um, I think it's command here. If you hold command, you're able to then modify it modify yeah. that point and that that used to drive me nuts it's like wait hold on how come i can't i can't go in <laughs> here and make them smaller again in the same way that it started right how yeah. come i can't do that but another way to be able to do that i'll show it to you in a little bit but that is pattern number one and we'll leave it at that we have it on our swatches and i think we can access it later so that let's looking pretty cool yeah it's looking pretty cool, I think. Tiffany also allows the colors in the gradient and also says that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of colors. So I'm going to try to make another one. I really like this one. I think this is one of uh, our chat's favorite yesterday. Yep. The blend effect, but not really. <laughs> the b- Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was guessing. It's a blend effect. I know it. <laughs> If we were running like a lottery, somebody would have won because in and the other ones yeah. was definitely the blend effect. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's paste this one in here. Tiffany in the chat has a question um, about patterns. Tiffany asks, I thought the overlapping edges were the best way to ensure your pattern is seamless. Is that not the case? Um, I think they're wondering about why we use the direct selection tool to um, remove the extra ones we had on the side um i don't really understand the question come again i think um the fact that the pattern is repeating and you made it in the way with the pattern maker is essentially ensuring that there wouldn't be extras when we have a shape yeah and they were just wondering why you use the direct selection tool oh yeah so yeah. um I guess this, it. I started to kind of consider my process usually because um, inside of Illustrator, you're right. I could probably just modify that, but because yeah. later we're going to bring it into um, Photoshop, I want that that selection to be one of the the closest ones that I will be using in my final project. And yeah. if I have to modify it in Illustrator, okay. I, I can do that because it's, again, it's still a workable file, but it's, it's just one of those things that I just want to make sure each edge is perfect and I don't have to um, come back to Illustrator to modify it. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you for answering that. I hope uh, that answers your question, Tiffany. So we're going to go into object pattern, make There you go. And these are really tightly bound. Ooh. Yeah, very close together. Yeah, it almost kind of looks like a continuous curve. I um, think that could look cool. I think even without <laughs> using space, that could look really cool. It kind of right, reminds this... me of like very funky light fixtures. 
Um, oh, <laughs> you're already yeah, in the right. home uh, <laughs> mindset. Yeah, I should have gotten live pictures. <laughs> you you got to think like what you you're making, right? You got to think about the target audience. So I feel like with like yeah. interior design, this would be such a perfect hit with like that kind of wire structure um, and the colors because then the light would emit. Like I don't know, it's it's just fun, very fun. <laughs> I love how you're you're going into this. We have a target audience. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. We have a of course, we, we have a target audience. We talked about how we are fans of <laughs> up above and down below. And both of us yeah. would have that in our home. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's down. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. How would this one look in a hex by column? Ooh, that's pretty neat. Kaylee in the chat says bubbles and um, then Val add space bubbles. Hmm. Nice. Space bubbles. <laughs> Imagine that was the terminology like we used <laughs> as opposed to what was it here? The name. Oh, they were not that complicated, actually. They were actually the not. Yeah. Stefan's, qu Stefan's Quintet. <laughs> Karina's Nebula. Just, you know, space bubbles. <laughs> That's all they are. <laughs> Yeah, I think I like this one here. I'm going to save this as uh, Space Bubbles. Let's do it. Oh, Yeah, Chad, if you want, you can give us names for the patterns. That's really actually a fun exercise. Yeah. Yeah, happy to incorporate some of the names. Space Bubbles is a fun idea. So do you do you already know what kind of background you're going to use for all of these patterns or are you just going to use the hidden trial and see what works out? Um, sometimes I like including the background and the pattern, uh, mm -hmm. but that kind of limits the distance that I can create without them starting to create a gap. And I'll yeah. show you one in, in, in one of these examples so we can see. Um, so I'll add the background post uh, yeah. having created the pattern. Uh, but that could be something that, you know, you can make a decision on if you still want to. Like, for example, this could go on something white or it can go on something dark. It, yeah. you know, kind of helps out to have that option. Nice. Right. Let's pick one here with, with a color pattern. Maybe we do stars. our stars. Let's do it. And looking at Chad, we're already time. 30 minutes in. Can you believe it? What is time? Um, what is, is time? joining us? <laughs> yeah, right? I'm um, so shocked. <laughs> um, if you're just joining us, thank you so much for joining us here on Adobe Live. We're live both on Behance and YouTube. So if you have any questions for us, um, let us know in the chat and I will read them to Sin. And we can incorporate all your name suggestions for all the patterns we're making today. Yeah, I think this yeah. is really fun and exciting because we're going to be working on mock-ups later um, and dive into Photoshop. So Sin is going to show us some new masking techniques, um, some of her workflow as well. So I'm really excited to learn from you. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I think you're so funny. Uh, what is time? It just <laughs> had me thinking about it. Yeah, it's yeah. a rhetorical question there. Kind of a heavy question there, but yeah. I feel like when we're live, we just don't really, we're, it's so ecstatic for me because you're just so in depth with everything and you're talking and chatting and learning yeah. at the same time. And it's just, you have no idea how the two hours fly by. Should we name the stars? I've been naming them Estrellas, which is the Spanish of stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of what that looks like, having that bounding box in it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's interesting to think of, like if I just stretch that bounding box or like move it to the side, you can start to see how it appears. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, but just moving those tiles around can get a little tricky. So because now we have gaps. Oh, OK. Yeah. So see that coming. Oh, so, so that's, is that is that because the background is small or is that because of the bounding yeah. box? Yeah, because the the bound the background is, is small, so it's just imitating that. So sometimes I try to refrain from using it until mm. post. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a workaround that, but 
I find it, unless I really need it, need to do, maybe I don't need spacing. Like in this one, I actually really like the spacing of the stars that I had already created. So yeah. that square came quite ready to just become a pattern and look really cool and dynamic. Now we start to play with some of the different tile types. It still is nice and tightly bound. So it's interesting how in the past, patterns we were really against being tightly bound and then this one it's really nice because our we can get to keep our background and yeah it's so fun to see because i don't think i've ever included a background when making patterns so this is fun yeah so if you're you're going to include that background definitely include it as a as a square yeah. unless you intentionally are trying to create a circle oh it makes another star there you go. Oh, That's wow. Our... That is fun. Yeah, that is a nice, happy accident. <laughs> that is a nice, happy accident. What are the odds? Oh, we got to save that. We just save it. Right. Oh, what? That is so fun. <laughs> I love that. We're just um, bumping into a lot of really cool experimental stuff here. I love it. I love that feeling when you're just so inspired when you create something experimental and then you just... It just is so motivational. It's like validation for you, and you just keep going on after that. So right, you, you, we reach that like cool flow, flow that yeah. we refer yeah. to. Yeah. Um, so it's nice not to have too specific of a guideline, right? I mean, a specific of a rule, more like a guideline. That's always neat. So we have another pattern. Ooh. I wonder what this one's gonna look like. I'm just curious. This one does have a black background Ooh, also. Yeah, that is. It, it could be end up being a large space. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Haley also agrees. So fun. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool because from here, you can honestly, when it comes to patterns, um, yeah, they're fun to make. But if you really wanted to think about, like, how can I repurpose some of my artwork? into real life materials that it can maybe sell on um, different platforms like Etsy, maybe your own shop. I feel like that yeah. can become a really nice outlet for artists that we just draw because we're enjoying it, right? We, we do it regardless, but just developing it into a pattern can become more, more accessible for an audience who want to like purchase it now, you know? Um, yeah. Also just a singular art is also really cool. I've, I've been really loving um, showcasing some singular work and just having wall art. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I love yeah. having wall art. It's, it's one of my favorite things to like have my own work out around the house because it just motivates you, right? Like to get, I remember the first time I printed uh, a photograph. I think it was a photograph. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a photo and it was during a really cool workshop for Canon. And they printed mm -hmm. it on this amazing Can Canon printer. So it wasn't just any like first print. It was the first print and it was about yay yeah. high. <laughs> and I just remember just like thinking, wow, this, this feels like it was, it's my birthday or mm -hmm. like something really special. So ever since yeah. I just became really in love with seeing some of these digital things that we create into some real, real life material. And I, I encourage you to try it out too. Absolutely. What would someone be uh, doing different if they decided to print something like, let's say, the star pattern? Um, I think depends where you would get it printed. I mean, there are some really cool uh, platforms out there like Society6 that lets you just provide a high resolution file that yeah. is RGB and then they, they figure out the rest. So you don't have to kind of work uh, worry too much about those those technical hiccups. But yeah. um but there are really cool Pantone swatches that, you know, can help you select some of these gradients beforehand, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Um, and Pantones are nothing but like, you know, being able to uh, have this swatch for this specific unique color and someone can actually replicate it in real life. That's pretty awesome. Like exactly <laughs> the way you the want same, it. It's like, yeah. it's like wanting to paint your wall, but you get the wrong swatch. I mean, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, Val in the chat says, if you draw a few cute little characters, turning those into a textile pattern could be great at first. Is that what you meant? And I just went ahead and said yes. Yeah. But I'm assuming that you did mean that. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah I yes. think, have you ever considered being like a surface pattern designer? Because I think you're great at making patterns and it's, you know, <laughs> it's actually a thing. You're so funny. <laughs> no, surface pattern designers um, are everywhere for everything that you see. I think in all our houses, we have like patterns all around us, but we just don't notice them because right. they're just so commonplace and we just miss them. And I feel like, Hmm. I don't know. Have you ever considered being someone that just makes patterns, and they can be complicated? Trust me. I didn't even with know like that could floral be stuff. next. Yeah. Next time I introduce myself, I'll be like, I make patterns. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'll get that that gig. Um, next you know, on your with, list. Yeah. With Adobe Capture, I've definitely become really like curious about like just textures around my house, textures outdoors, uh, yeah. more. More obvious would be like foliage elements. I mean, I was taking pictures of all of my plants and mm-hmm. that was really, really fun. Um, it's interesting in the, in the different ways that uh, your environment can end up in, in influencing your artwork, right? Absolutely. Like in this case, we yeah. are directly influenced by an image. Um, unfortunately, we can't see that with our bare eyes, but some of the, the things that are around you can inspire your color palette, which is... Um, can also be captured with Adobe Captured, and and yeah, I think textures would be a really neat neat thing to check out. Like, uh, yeah. have you ever seen like some close up images of like like an orange or like a close up yeah. Im- image? Yeah. yeah, like very macro, and you just yeah. all you see is a pattern in it. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Hmm. I think this one definitely has to be like a grid system. It starts to get a little weird here. Otherwise, oh, hexagon can, does not work for this. Hexagon one. does not work, right? <laughs> oh, this could <laughs> potentially work. I mean, yeah, I don't know. maybe like a wallpaper. Since you mentioned that earlier, I think this sort of overlaps the black um, background. I think I think that's that's what it does. It might it be a bit be. too many. Fun. This is uh, oh I we had, I didn't even mention the copies that can actually determine how many you actually have within your pattern at once. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to leave it at three by three just to be able to see it myself. Um, here five by five looks cool too. So yeah, I don't know. I can't make. A, I'm gonna go with the grid. I mm. could always like. Oh wow. I love that um, this can be animated as well. Now that you I know that, that last time, yeah, I, I feel like there has to be now a session where we animate one of these. Yep. Just to I think you should do it either way. I mean, it would be fun to see on one of your live streams as well, um, because I know you live stream on Behance, so I think it would yeah. be a fun transition into the live streams. Um, maybe animating some of these. Yeah, I actually have been. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I love, I love being able to like go from. I think this one has a version here where we yeah. created a poster design, and I couldn't help but animate it. But plot twist: I did the animation in Photoshop. What you can do? Yeah, that? <laughs> yes, you can do that. You can do that. Which, you know, I yeah. part part of it. Part of the reason why I was motivated to share it was because um, it did. Um, it was kind of like an intro. For me to be less intimidated intimidated by a timeline and so using photoshop like i said photoshop is my favorite um adobe app and um because it has just so many different things it has its foot on everything Mm -hmm. and yeah it did we did very simple things you know transitioning from big to small but we were able to make these this uh really cool shape here that circle and uh we were able to make it glow with opacity i mean very really simple, fun. right? Yeah. But just consider it. Um, okay. It's an interesting step along the way. So if you think you have to be like a super pro animator to be able to make some of these effects, not really. Um, it's it's. Yeah. In, I mean, yes, yes, really. Those those folks are amazing. But also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I also, love. Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. I was just saying that I also love the Photoshop timeline. I think that it's very underrated sometimes, and a lot of people don't even explore it. I mean, especially the beginners who don't know that Photoshop can be used in versatile ways. I think that that's such a um, neat feature. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I don't know what to call this. I'm calling it glob. Uh, 
my my written energy today is a little bit different from yesterday's <laughs> okay so i'm gonna leave that one there and i really like Wait, it did we just call that glob yeah <laughs> okay globe globe blob okay got it blob glob yeah, it sounds blob that glows that makes sense I think I'm going to go um, for So when you mentioned that you use Adobe right. Capture to make patterns um can you use those patterns somewhere Um and if so how do you use those patterns from Adobe Capture Yeah is it interesting it libraries or something like that Yes Yeah you so they they get included within your libraries and you can choose yeah. to modify them afterwards um I don't know if I have like a Oh here. How interesting. These are some of the elements that I did capture on Adobe Capture with like the vector shapes. Mm-hmm. And and that's my plant. That's one of my plants. Wow. Okay. I know. I'm introducing you guys to <laughs> to my plant and this is another one here. Oh. So were these oh. just the uh images that you captured inside your house is that something like that actually ironically enough this plant is dying <laughs> it's the little hair on the top is that it's it got too much sun so oh, didn't make yeah. it but yeah this set came with a pattern um i think it's this one here or i think mm-hmm. it was my um the picture of a heart that i took but yeah you do collect a, it, it creates a pattern for you which is interesting yeah. and then like you get this one's out of an image but you can actually then you know choose to modify that pattern yeah. but that is through adobe capture i think this is another uh one of the plant yeah and uh- I think these are exported as jpegs and then when you go back to adobe capture or the software that you used to initially create them you can go ahead and change yeah. the settings and tweak whatever um, preferences you yeah, want yeah i noticed that yeah because yeah. i mean i really like this one but i definitely like the vector we all like the vector option much more mm-hmm. but if you wanted yeah. to play on on photoshop yeah so there's different i definitely have to organize my library there's a lot of goodies in here they're fun The library is definitely one of my favorite things that has developed. Love it, yeah. Oh, I didn't include the background on this one. Wonder. Then I'm going to create this one more. How are we doing with time just in case? Um, we're about 40 minutes in, so I think we're good. We have Oh, nice. The artist spotlight at the 90 minute mark. I know. Mark, so that's really exciting. I'm excited about um, that. If you're watching that. this, yeah, if you're watching this and you don't know what our spotlight is, it's actually a segment that we have on usually on day 2 of our live streams and we highlight a creative from the community or someone that you've known the work from and have been inspired of basically. Um and you can put in their names in our little art spotlight tab right above chat. So if you're watching this on Behance, it's right above chat and you can go in, give us your recommendations and maybe we can highlight them in a future art spotlight but we yeah. have that at the 90 minute mark and i'm really excited to showcase and talk about their work with you hmm this oh, that interesting. is interesting yeah this what, what could be fun much. yeah i was going to say that that what could be fun is it if it gave us the illusion that it almost goes into the other grid i don't know and the square yeah yeah that's kind of the tricky part because if you make yeah. what the the left edge is really different from the right edge so mm-hmm. if the right and left is almost like a video transition right yeah. if yeah. the ending point and the starting point of the next are similar that's yeah. going to work but otherwise it can get a little bit um more noticeable mm-hmm. so that this might not end up uh doing that really cool like seamless this but if i make it into a different shape it might give yeah. me a different result oh i have the background let's i'm going to remove the background for now yeah i think it's much easier for our non destructive um kind of approach that we have here to yeah have i think so yeah yeah definitely ends up uh being like a post method. Well, mm-hmm. 5 by 5 is fine. 
Yeah, and then you can just change colors. You don't need to go into the pattern over and over again to to change the color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's really interesting because honestly, uh creating something like this can start with a simple shape like we've created a lot of these graphic elements and yeah. uh just like that you've created something really interesting and um you can sort of develop that a little bit more as you go along. I'm mm-hmm. going to save this one. Do we have a a name for this one? We do not have a name. Chad, if you have any names for us for the patterns, <laughs> that would be really really good. That would be really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Lines. <laughs> named it lines okay yeah i know i'm <laughs> yeah I'm, i i swear i'm in the creative industry <laughs> no we talked about copywriting i mean not everyone has to be a copywriter and it's totally fine to call yeah. it lines they are lines after all yeah lines one lines two lines final lines yep. final two <laughs> exactly you got it yeah. so when we talk about naming I know we haven't saved yet. Do you think we should save now? <laughs> yeah. It's about Maybe. that time. Maybe let's, let's save. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One hour into it, it's save time. Yeah, if you're watching and lurking as well, lurkers, it's time to save your work. Get some get yeah. some water and stretch. That was and... a test if you caught it. Did exactly. you catch it, Annika, or someone in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So do you do you send off your files uh, what do you think about naming do you send off your files with do you collaborate often with people and designers how does mm-hmm. that work Oh yeah like uh naming my files always um it's almost like a I would say like a copyright signature I always include my name first the mm-hmm. the name of the um the person I'm working with the purpose yes. whether it's the project name uh or campaign name and i involve the um the version and the date and that's it right okay. um yeah. and actually i put the, yeah and so that starts to change along the way and we're we're all able to find it and then within my folder systems it works the same way right so it's me first then it's my client then it's the campaigns or projects or what not and yeah. it just makes things so much better um It's a, it's a, it's so crazy how those systems could take so long for us to figure out but if one of the best compliments I've gotten at uh different design studios that I've worked at is how organized I can keep my items. Um this is probably not a fair example of that. My library is not a fair example of that. But it for when when you work for other companies more it's more important to be able to save everything or have a, an organization system because other designers work on your items too. So mm-hmm. having that kind of cooperative uh process is helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that all of us have different processes to even um name our files and that is so fascinating to me. Yeah, do you how do you do yours? Um I do something similar but I do not include my name which in retrospect I should but that's only Whoa. because I mean just for the files that I'm sending off <laughs> because it's it's essentially the client's file if it's like a logo file i include what format there is and um hmm. just the project name or a brand name yeah yeah or a brand name yeah, yeah but definitely include your name i think that's going to be i mean like, that's it, just can be, there you know like <laughs> just there <laughs> but that's a good suggestion i think i should do that yeah What do you think about like copyright issues? Do you do you typically when you send off files since you're talking about that do you include something like that in your contract that hey um do you need original files how does that work? Um wait give me a sec. Yep, no worries. Um we have Rose in the chat mentioning that she has managed to transfer some patterns in Adobe Capture and it's wonderful. Yeah, I feel like Adobe Capture is a very um powerful tool and it's like something that you can use on the go at all times and it's just it's brilliant that you can use that and use it in with other adobe suite applications as well so if you oh, make yeah, it very, totally. very yeah yeah what are we I doing think now that, we, um we... oh yeah random i like using <clears throat> i like using the 
the scale property or just to be mm -hmm. able to transform each item because it can get cumbersome to do it like this and not remember what the shortcuts are to be able to yeah. do it, change things up and uh, modify your pattern or mm -hmm. modify the bound bonding box of your pattern. So going right clicking transform, you can go into this and just uh, press one of these. I press scale. And then that lets me preview what I'm changing. So I'm currently just making it a little bit bigger. So it did 120 uniform. And sometimes okay. you can't see it. I click preview again, and that just lets me lets me see that. Um, I can also just like scale the corners, right? Mm -hmm. And things like that. So it gives me kind of like a little bit more power to uh, do something without feeling like it's cumbersome did I did I do it um did I do it uh without kind of morphing it or changing up the scale or if it if you want to be specific somebody wants to ask you to change it you know 10 percent a client wants to ask you that then you can definitely do that nice yeah thank you for explaining that yeah you can do the same thing with all of these different things so you can also mm -hmm. transform other elements and in, in this oh, that is fun okay yeah in this one now we're talking. yeah <laughs> so instead of um changing the bounding box you can also change the inside artwork mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about going in there wondering like wait why doesn't it work because yeah. um when you do double click this it doesn't actually let you do that exactly yeah. Yeah. so um it it feels a little bit different from the workflow you're used to so being mm -hmm. able to go in there and doing that helps um mitigate that that issue Very cool. so i'm gonna yeah. i think i'm gonna bring this one into photoshop and play around um before so i can introduce you to this a little bit before we jump into um our portfolio review mm -hmm. portfolio review yeah and so i've picked a few things here and i want to show you an interesting resource so I've been using Adobe Stop quite quite a bit in the past. Um, interestingly enough, there's a lot of really cool uh, things available within the free category uh, yeah. that it can already kind of help you get started in case like you want to find something. I got this this guy here, and um, it isn't going to be as say specific if you're looking for a a criteria of interior design that um, maybe your client is more uh, into as part of your mood board, so to speak. Uh, that might be something that maybe you want to invest in uh, Adobe Stock for. But it's really cool to, as, as an artist or as an independent artist, if you want to showcase your work, uh, you have that opportunity. Like, um, I uh, just go in here and show you. So for example, to showcase some of these uh, prints, I, mm. I've downloaded different images so that I can kind of showcase them in a in an environment that's not me actually. So yeah. it, it was an actual mock, mocked up photo. And that saves me some time to be able to showcase some of this work um, in an interior space. Yeah, and I think it, it contributes to like making it uh, like you mentioned that I was saying that it looks like light fixtures, it kind of contributes to you trying to imagine how it would look in your space. And that contributes to whole shopping experience as well. Yeah, right. So it, it helps convert that shopping experience into, okay, I can kind of see how it would look in my my space. And sometimes, yeah. you know, like this interior design can vary from something like this. And mm -hmm. so it's helpful to have... Uh, uh, at times the subscriptions to be a bit more specific, but whenever you just want to uh, try things for yourself and create, collect a nice library of uh, mock-ups that can help yeah. you even showcase your work for an employer, that that could Absolutely. be another purpose. Um, Adobe Stock has been really handy for things like that. And it has all these really cool filter systems in case you want to be, be very specific down to the megapixels. Absolutely. Oh, I did not know that that was an option there. <laughs> yeah yeah so um i did download a few of these here which i think we can start to uh play with yeah i want to try this this pillow because i totally like 
uh, talked about mm. it so much yesterday. <laughs> I was like, we're going to put it on a pillow. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's see. So within Photoshop, now we're in Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. Within Photoshop, I like to kind of keep um, some of these items at first as a, a, as a rasterize uh, image. So they come in as a kind of a vector image whenever I, am, I place them in. I like to place as embedded. So I don't have to go yeah. looking for a link, right? Yeah. Um, can depends on you. But it when when it's Im embedded, it becomes a vector shape, which is that little that little guy, like a smart object, that little guy there, so that you can modify it should you want to select it independently and modify mm -hmm. like the color or something. Uh, yeah. Which sometimes that that's helpful. Hey, I actually wanted to make it brighter, uh, yeah. or black and white. Oh, that's kind of much but yeah so that would would save automatically and that's the power of just having all these images linked so making yeah. that decision to rasterize it can be uh, an actual specific decision because it's not as a work of, as as much of a workable file mm -hmm. um but i'm doing that because i want to use the properties panel um and the properties panel i have a few options here that pop up in the quick actions yeah. And uh, it lets me remove a background or select a subject. And it also has all sorts of other uh, really neat, uh, helpful um, features that can be just quickly done. For example, you want to blur the background if you want to kind of create that that nice bouquet effect on some really cool light fixtures or something like that could be neat. Yeah. Um, selecting the subject, smoothing out skin. So these these things that we tend to do as artists, maybe quite frequently in our workflow, uh, Adobe has decided to put them as like quick, easy fixes so that we can have them accessible to us and, and utilize them as, as we like it. I love that. Yeah, I, I love the discover panel that has been added to all the applications. I feel like that makes your workflow much smoother as well. Yeah. Yeah. We talked so, about shortcuts yesterday. I feel like that is handy for us as well. Because um, I know for like Apple users, there was the search option where you could look for things that like let's say I don't know where the blend effect is in Illustrator. I could just search if I'm using um the application on a Mac, but this was previously not available on Windows machine user, and now it right. is. So I think that's yeah. really, really exciting. Yeah. That's interesting. You have to take that into account too, the different yeah. operating systems. Yeah. So I'm going to select subject with this one. It has a little kitty there uh, as an option. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, it tells me what I'm currently selecting the layer on to make sure that like you're doing it on the right one. I do have a few layers up on this one. Mm -hmm. And so it did a really fairly good job at selecting this particular subject even though we have a background that is yeah. wood um it did select um the pillow quite quite well i do have a bit of a snippet here from the plant maybe we don't want that there are two we did ask it to select subjects and we do have two subjects so interestingly enough sometimes you do want that but i think in this at this um opportunity it chose the most predominant one so I'm just going to create, uh, I'm just going to unselect that by uh, grabbing the marquee tool yeah, and holding alt so that it's a minus, a little minus pops up and we can get rid of that. And that was easy enough. Did you like say, that's already. Yeah, did you yeah. say you were using alt on the keyboard for subtracting it? Yeah. Alt or option. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just making sure. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, uh, that will kind of help you. So it's nice to navigate navigate between like adding a selection, subtracting a selection, and the same thing will apply when we select our masks tool. So what we're going to do here after this is we're going to select the mask. And if I hold that alter option, it will actually subtract that mask. So anything that's black will hide. Anything mm -hmm. that's white will reveal. And that's pretty much how that works. And you can always brush in any extra elements that you want to be included with yeah. white, right? And I just help that that alter option key is pretty handy because I just selected that little thumbnail of my, um, my mask and that mm -hmm. showed me 
that uh, selection that I made. And I did, did it again. And here you go. We're back to our artwork. Now, nice, if that's yeah. not exactly what I wanted to do, then I can also not hold alt. Yeah. Let's go back, not hold alt. And then it will remove the, the remaining, the outside area. So it'll be mm -hmm. uh, reversed. Right? Yeah. So I do want to do that. I want to make a duplicate in this case. Yeah. And I'm just going to uh, put them into a group. And so this is my pillow. So I noticed that I do a, a kind of like a, a workflow where it's like things are sandwiched with different mm -hmm. attributes, right? So we have, right now we have the pillow and in this one, I'm going to just keep my background. So I'm going to delete that layer mask. Okay. And then in the top one, that pillow has a bit of color to it. It's kind of like on the warm end, you can see there. Yeah. So I'm going to actually create, um, go into, into this one and make it uh, grayscale. And I actually don't think, uh, let's see, grayscale going directly here. I usually just hit, here you go, black and white. I also usually just hit the shortcuts. Yep. But you can just do that. Right. Yeah. And then that, this gives you like a lot of different uh, versions of black that you can try. And that, and you can't really tell that it's black and white because we just did it on the pillow. But the reason is, why I'm doing that mm -hmm. um, is to be able to showcase or highlight more of the shadows so that we yeah. can borrow them to make the, the imposing of the patterns more realistic. What was your question? That was my question. Is there a particular yeah. reason why you're doing that? Yeah. Yeah. So then that no longer has that kind of warmth color to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I get to do that. So let's bring in that really neat um, element. I'm just going to copy it here. Although I can definitely borrow um, these elements from the library and just bring them in in the same fashion. Mm -hmm. um, I like being able to have them as a vector. And so I'm going to just paste it here and I guess either way this is kind of just how I go about it very cool let's see I think I changed the, the sizing there I'm gonna hold shift cool and now we have our pattern Uh, turn. Mars, let's do it. And then what I'm going to do here is begin to change some of the, um, the modes to try to mm -hmm. see what would work best for yeah. this particular image. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that anything that relies on like something, I think on the white ends up being in this little section as you, I don't know if you've noticed before but they're actually kind of compartmentalized here there's a little divider are, yeah. mm -hmm. and so that's going to give you a sense of okay this is reacting to black this is reacting to white and this is kind of like a mixture of the of them and that's kind of how I, I've begun to understand it um yeah. I'm I am going to add the mask to this pattern so that we don't have that extra layer, right? And it's as easy yeah. as just either holding this, this thumbnail of our um, our vector mask. Yes, I, I kind of blanked there for a second. <laughs> vector mask uh, and dragging yeah. it over, right? It could be that yeah. simple. Mm -hmm. Or you can, um, or you can click command and that okay. makes that selection again, yeah. right? And then I just add it. And that can, nice. you know, whichever way might be be helpful for you. But just knowing that you can create that selection again that you did earlier, that's pretty cool. Especially if if you've done it with like painstaking pen tool uh, action. Yeah. It's it's like, wow, I can, <laughs> I lost it. I didn't save it in my path. It's definitely yeah. easy to just be able to select if you do have a mask there already available. Love that. This, yeah. I think yeah. it's already coming together. Did we did we change the blend mode for this at all? No, we haven't changed 
change that yet. I think I'm going to do here, but let's see. I have to place this uh, pattern below mm -hmm. our, what I would call our texture layer. Hmm. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. So that's going to act as our texture. And we're going to do the same thing for this one, kind of change up that, that uh, pa uh, mode mm -hmm. to something a, a bit the blend mode as to something a bit more natural. Let's see which one kind of ends up working for this. It's kind of like a nice uh, examination of like, what are the light conditions of this photo and which one might be a little bit closer to it? I think it was up here. Usually multiply, overlay, soft lights tend to be really good like go-tos for something like this and just lowering opacities and trying to just sort of see where it lands a little bit closer. I'm going to actually unlink this image uh, from the vector and start to reshape this to see what else comes out of this. Do I want them to be bigger, smaller, and just have all these opportunities to create your design a little bit more um, specific to your liking. Yeah, Val in the chat says, I don't think I've ever gone so in-depth with a mock-up in this way. Yeah, I agree. I think I've never used the actual mask layer as like a texture layer. I always just change the art layer to a multiply layer um, on top. If I'm using lighter colors, I think the multiply really works well with like the pillow layer or the texture layer beneath it. But it's fine. Yeah. Um, Tiffany says, um, so converting to black and white on the pillow will help the blend because it uses the blacks and whites in the masked item. Is that right? Is that why yeah. we change it to grayscale? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's awesome. It's great that you understand that because yeah, like it's one of those things that um, a, an environment tends to have leak some like blue light mm -hmm. or some warmer light. And maybe that kind of works in your favor, but if, yeah. if it starts to tamper with the color palettes of the pattern that you're showcasing, that mm -hmm. might not actually work. Um, yeah. And it might uh, interact in a funky way, especially with the color modes. So I would just kind of keep that in mind. And let's see what it would look like with a different one, just to check out different options here. Ooh, I think I really love this. This I know I think me too yeah. we're just such fans of this one yeah. and and like before it's just like a matter of making sure that pattern is sandwiched between the original image and that mm. texture image okay. so we can play with it very cool I think this would this would look great in all orientations as well yeah and like before, I'm just going to drag that pattern to be able to close out that shape. And if I did want to include a color background on this one, I can definitely mm -hmm. just bring in a simple square and just or yeah. circle, whatever uh, yeah. works on this end. Let's see, properties. Um, I don't think I need that here. Just change the color. Yeah. All my little things are popping up in my second screen. Yeah, that always happens. And then, <laughs> where is this? Where is this pop up box? Why can't I click into Photoshop? What's wrong? Yeah. Wait, where, where did, did it go? go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, and totally understand that. So, is this like the background layer that we're going to use? Are we also going to mask this one as well? Yeah, I'm going to mask this one. Let's do. Removed it from the other one, so hold that alt. And you can always like try different colors or pick from one of your color palettes mm -hmm. and see what what might end up working in your favor. I think yeah. a little bit of like yellow could look cool. But that's interesting to be able to see a a a basic shape behind it, and without that pattern. It doesn't really, I mean, it's just, it's just this, right? It doesn't look yeah. as realistic yeah. as having um, those different um, shadows involved in it. Absolutely. Yeah, the texture really does play a huge role in making it look realistic as well. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I really like this one and this and this pillow. I think I'm gonna use in the in the um in honor of just be, being able to make your artwork a beautiful wall art. I think yeah. I'm gonna place one of our uh, favorites. This guy here. I'm trying to think which one it is, but because I love them all. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're just like me. I don't have a favorite color. Yeah. yeah. I love no. them all. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Yeah, Gotta I love this. All. Love the center one though. Yeah, I do love this one. So you're gonna create a pattern out of this wall art, or just have one single? Like I think I'm just gonna do the one. single one just to mm -hmm. kind of showcase the um the way we embed it into this one. This is a simple yeah. one. This one doesn't yeah. require too much. Uh, but just in the spirit of getting you inspired to be, uh, begin to mock up some of your uh, mm -hmm. artwork into real world spaces. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I don't know why that took me so long to do, knowing that I have that available to me. And um, it just creates, it translates a different type of uh, feel that you can't mm -hmm. really do with just uh, exporting a vector PDF or, you know, showcasing it in your website alone. Um, yeah. Just kind of standing in the in the kind of space of pixels. It helps to be able to mock it up and give that person that opportunity to feel what it might look like. And so I would do the same thing for this one and try to involve a little bit of there's a little bit of shadows that happen here on the right hand side, mm -hmm. right? And a little bit of highlights that happen on the left hand side. So yeah. I can create, sandwich this one in too for a frame and create a texture layer, which we know we are going to um, make into black and white. Very cool. Yeah, Tiffany also agrees they're all my favorites and Carol says that is my favorite. Yeah. Love it. That is your favorite? Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you have a favorite. You're much better than us at selecting <laughs> favorites. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Always spoiled for choice. Oh, yeah. so are we still doing the grayscale technique in this one as well? Yeah, so that we can keep that texture. Um, mm -hmm. And in reality, we don't need to, what, this is one of the best, most, mo actually, this is one of the most difficult selections you'll ever encounter. Um, mm -hmm. You just do this <laughs> and it works out. Um, we just need to borrow this really cool highlight on the border of the edges so that yeah. it starts to look a bit more realistic. So mm -hmm. that, that was simple enough. I didn't need to like over complicate it. But again, we're just using that masking tool, which kind of gives us a freedom of moving things around should yeah. we want to still modify elements. But this layer is specifically meant to act as a um, texture layer should we need it. So we have a multiply here, maybe something like soft light. Mm -hmm. Might That'd start cool. to look, yeah, it looks a little bit less like Black is a pretty stark color on this one. Yeah. So I might be able to like lower that a little bit and try to kind of pretend like there's some lighting. Now, if there's also kind of a, the possibility of you rendering your own like artificial light and yeah. just use a bit of a brush action here with um, with a white color, maybe if there's a warmer light color happening in the room. You can use something yeah. like a taupe and um, doing that. I think the highlight was on this side, right? It and was, the highlight, yeah. yeah. So we definitely want that brush to be on the softer end. So we'll lower that completely and make it fairly big, right? And then just add that mask to it so that it's kind of mm -hmm. like, I think it's going to be this mask. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. That's yeah, so that we start to just play with um, the ambience and, and make it feel, I guess the goal is that it looks as, as realistic as you can. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's going to be um, some images that, that really give you, when you're allocating time to uh, source those images and spaces like a, Adobe Stock um, or the yeah. web, 
definitely look out for elements like does it have uh the 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 potential for texture like does this wall have enough variation where it's not a blank wall but rather it kind of starts to change where the the highlights it goes from light to a little bit darker and i can include that can involve that as texture to my wall so that it doesn't look like superimposed and sort of false that that little element of texture really takes you a little bit further So I think I could actually do this one next. Let's do a wallpaper. Let's see which pattern we had here. You said this one would be a great wallpaper, right? Was oh one. yeah. I forgot about that with all the with all the pillows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one's kind of pillowy also. I also love how it has like a 3D effect so it kind of makes it look like it's coming at you so that would look great on a pillow. And I love that with all of these um patterns that you've made here it all seems like they would make for so since we're talking pillows they would i know we just align them anywhere if they're on a couch and these would look in good in every orientation so if it's like upside down or a different right. orientation these would all still look great i think that's a very important point here to to think right of i think so too patterns yeah yeah because it, if you were um I mean, the pen's the kind of the asset that you made. Like we said before, being able to have those two ends match could be tricky. It's a bit more mm-hmm. complex pattern making. Yeah. Um, but definitely can be easy enough uh, with some of the more more like uh, symmetrical shapes. Yeah. So let's see if this one can give us the handy act of like selecting the background. Uh, it's a little bit like kind of like blown out back here so i don't know if it's just gonna bleed out i'm not sure um but let's see how it does i have uh, like remove background this is a simple sort of mid-century environment yeah Yeah, that wasn't that bad it took a little bit of my, a few bites of my um, yeah. computer over here. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of the legs. And these are kind of moments that you can uh, go in here and sort of help uh, the sensei kind of understand these little elements that you were trying to select. But I, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, I would I could tell something like that would happen because it, some areas were blown out already. So it could it can be confused for the wall. Uh, and it's just a little bit of highlights that happen here. But what's good is that we have we have an, uh, really uh, w- a workable file here. We have an, a mask that we can go in here and still modify, right? So that is not a final selection. We can still go in here and modify it. And so I said earlier, the black hides and the white reveals. So I'm going to make sure that my foreground has a white color selected and i'm just Mm going to increase that harness to 100 uh, so that my edges are sharp very cool yeah and select that mask um so that i'm not painting on the frame because that would just look weird um so i'm going to just zoom in here So are we doing this just because we want to insert something like the pattern behind these these objects in the image? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna include it into the wall. So nice. in reality, I will reverse that mask. But yeah, good question. Because right now I'm, yeah. we ended up selecting the subject because we yeah. removed the background, which is kind of yeah. one and the same. Um, and that yeah. could be a great way to just like. Uh, find yourself like you might want to select the subject because you want the background and so you mm-hmm. uh, in the past have placed the subjects independently and that has helped 
um very cool yeah we have becca and daniel and matthew all of us joining the stream today hey welcome on in everyone who's welcome. just joining us we'll almost we're almost at the 90 minute mark actually we're at the 80 minute mark so in 10 minutes we have a very exciting artist spotlight nice yeah what is time what is time yeah <laughs> <laughs> And then we have a little bit of the legs here that also got um, brushed out. I actually have a couch similar to this. Um, yeah. And I really like the legs, the mid-century classic. Perfect for the pillow cover that you're going to have then. <laughs> yeah. The My stage couch inspired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, maybe I can convince uh, my wife to print it. Absolutely. The next time you're here, we're going to see the pillow in the background somewhere. Yeah. It was the funniest. We had the funniest um, debate about that. We had to buy pillows for it. Mm. And and I was like, why aren't you buying pillows from an artist? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to support them. <laughs> it's like, oh, I just want like a blank pillow. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Can we try something cool? <laughs> um, yeah. We don't have that many pillows right now. The debate was not resolved. <laughs> Love that. So yeah. in this case, so I did, I kind of helped it a little bit. So we do, we did lose our background. So we want to create a, a sort of re reverse selection. We can yeah. um, subtract mask from selection, I believe. And this one, mm, is it that? I don't remember. I'm going to do it my usual way. Cause I'm pretty sure there is another way. There's Just, always there's, five different ways. There's always the same thing. Yeah. Right. There's I wouldn't worry five. about that. I think even if you feel like, I mean, just not you, but in general, you, uh, you watching you, but if in general, you feel like your workflow is uh, much longer than what is, what could be the more efficient one. It's not yeah. the case because you've been doing this for a long time and you just made yourself more efficient <laughs> doing the longer workflow. If you think it's longer, I mean, it's not necessarily the longer workflow. It's, I, I do think it's longer. I think mine's is like one, one more step than it should be. But okay, let's, yeah. I'm just gonna select it, right? Command select that, um, uh, that mask. And yeah. then I'm just gonna delete it and instead apply the, um, holding alter option, apply the, mm -hmm. the inverse of that. Right. So mm -hmm. that I can have that option or actually, like I said earlier, we can also just select the subjects and place yeah. them in the foreground. So yeah. we have those subjects independently. So when we add that wall, um, yeah. that artwork, we could just keep that in the foreground. Yeah. I and think I think that's, that's, I think I'm going to go that way. Yeah. There's yeah. so many ways of doing this. It's Absolutely. kind of interesting. Yeah. So let's see this. This really funky wall smart object you can start to place maybe i should have downloaded like an arcade or something like that <laughs> they would love this wall art yeah <laughs> absolutely the i also love that the pillow in the foreground matches like the tones um for the wallpaper as well you really thought this through the yeah. pillows no i don't i don't think i thought that one through but <laughs> thanks thanks for the credit <laughs> i will happy take accidents it. yeah absolutely yeah we'll just edit out the part where i i admitted that yep. i didn't know <laughs> yep. no we can't do that it's a live stream <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows <We're... laughs> so are we uh, also changing the blend mode in this one Yes. So always blend blend modes are definitely your friend. Um, you can mm -hmm. already see uh, since the yeah. image is not actually taken up to the top, you can already see yeah. how what it does it makes between that top and that bottom it starts mm -hmm. to change the actually I have to go a little higher. I think there you go. Um, so I'm just going to edit that out of oh, the other way. There you go. Yeah. So that becomes part of my wall. And much like we did before, I think I'm going to create that that black and white image. So I have yeah. a sandwiched pattern and you can start to see that something like this can become a really useful uh, workflow so that mm -hmm. um, 
so that you can do something like this fairly simply uh, with the help of like the properties panel, but also by like using, putting a little bit of uh, TLC and making sure the selections are good. And then just having this really one, like three step um, way of creating something that looks a bit more natural. So I'm gonna add the texture here. I think the adding in light part is something that most people kind of miss and that's why um, it kind of looks like unrealistic and you can see those hard edges, but I feel like this is a great pro tip right here that adding, yeah. do you think your photography background contributes to you thinking of like design this way? Uh, I Yes, absolutely. I think so, yeah. actually. Um, in the past, um, I had to design like, a, I had to design a mock-up for a bottle and that I didn't know I didn't have the resources I have now to be able to develop mm -hmm. like a you know a 3d render uh in dimension or something of the likes so I would just grab a picture and then involve the artwork on top of it so that people who are going to produce this bottle can have a clear idea of what what the positioning was and things like that um yeah. especially when the production was overseas is so like a lot of uh language barriers of uh, one of the most beautiful things I always say is like visual language is one of our common languages. So being able to create mockups like this involved a lot of highlighting and mm. just so that they look good. I also, you know, the, I had a, a great client, wonderful client. And so they had a high standard and I wanted them to feel like uh, everything that was outputted during their brand effort was really, really nice. Um, so yeah. I definitely did a lot of mock-ups on that front. And so you can use it for interior design. You can use it to mock up uh, uh, products. Mm -hmm. Could be a different way of doing that. I love the idea. Tiffany and Val both are loving the wallpaper design. And Tiffany says, I'm ready to add it to my card. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your sign to put it on your shop. Indeed. Yeah, so I can go crazy sometimes in there. I'm like, oh wow, this mock-up is so beautiful. Um, <laughs> and it, that's that's another medium of income, I think. If you really think we've been talking or touching on some mm -hmm. some points here of just yeah. having access to creating your graphics into patterns to provide real life products, um, but also selling your mock-ups is a is an outlet, right? We we all love that and being able to create a process like this so that others can use it and others can use your file can yeah. be also really helpful um i found that in the past has has really been helpful i'm actually i have this in black and white let's put our our um color so i was thinking about that yeah i'm like wait what happened to my color where's the color yeah i love it yes objects in the foreground the objects didn't require a color mode. But yeah, we mm -hmm. can still uh, unlink that and create and have that pattern scale in different sizes. Yeah. Um, in this case, I think I have to scale up because I created a mask upwards. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's very big. <laughs> um, do you think that you would change orientations in Photoshop when you're doing something like this. Maybe you create a pattern and then you bring it to a mockup and you don't like it. Would you would you go back to Illustrator or would you do the changes over here in Photoshop like you are now? I think that uh, making a pat it depends. It's sort of like a, a choice on like whether this pattern is going to become part of other elements. Mm -hmm. then you might still want to have like one true swatch that you can always yeah. count on, especially if you're translating the swatch over to some uh, somebody who's going to produce it or uh, like the your your production team or someone who is also another, a fellow designer that needs to make maybe a, uh, a different uh, object. They yeah. just, we need to kind of have that that option to have like a swatch you can count on. So if I make this trivial decision of flipping it upside down here, that might not reflect on the swatch, yeah. right? Yeah. So that, yeah, that's a good question because it's interesting how those things are more technical, um, yeah. more on the, the workflow of the actual work environment mm -hmm. as opposed to, um, as opposed to the workflow within here, right? Yeah. I don't know where this is coming from, but this is like a little guy here. 
There it is. Found it. Yeah. Yeah. Just delete it. I'm going to ignore it for now. I'm I'm nitpicking on on a live stream. I don't know why. (laughs) It's all good. It's it's perfectionist in you. I love that. (laughs) Have we done three until now? Have we done the frame? Um, so we the- did. So we did this pillow here, mm-hmm. which is really really cool. And mm-hmm. then we've done um, this one's really nice, actually. I I might actually print it, or I yeah. might print the this this one here. I I actually have access to printing because I have a printer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, re- I love my printer. It's, it's beautiful. And it helps me create these really amazing fine art prints that I'm just like, wow. Uh, sometimes yeah. I have to stop myself and be like, okay, can't waste all your ink. Um, yep. But <laughs> but yeah, this one, <clears throat> this one's really nice. I really like um, the replica of, of the shape. And then we also made the wallpaper. And I think up next, we, after our review, I like to... Mm-hmm. Uh, help you see how some an image like this could be selected and you probably have some hints of it it's interesting to see uh images that involve little plants like this oops yeah where'd you go little plants um like this because sometimes Mm -hmm. plants could be just like so cumbersome because I mean this one's not the one. There's definitely some that are you know you have those pompa pompas. I don't know what they're called, yeah. but they're just they're just very complex. It's it, it starts to look a little bit like selecting hair or something like that. So mm-hmm. uh, having plants um, can involve a little bit more painstaking selections. But if you yeah. notice, we haven't had to use the pen tool for it to yeah. do this. Uh, which the pen tool can sometimes be, you know, your best friend in other areas. Cumbersome. And sometimes it's just like painstaking thought. And it still does like a really great job. And that's kind of why you you choose to do that at the end anyhow. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it is that time now. We are at the Artist Spotlight tab and the mark. Um, Don't forget to submit your recommendations for creators to highlight for our next Artist Spotlight. But... Today, we have someone really special here. Um, can we look at their profile and look at some of their work, highlight yeah. what they do and who they are? Yeah, so we have Santiago Gonzalez, a graphic designer from Bogota, Colombia, and um, a fellow uh, follower of my live stream on Behance. And mm-hmm. we wanted to showcase um, his work. I found it to be really interesting to see like so many um, really like different elements, different dynamic elements. So which one do you want to dive into? I think I'm really attracted to the 3D. Um, The X at the top really reminds me of 36 Days of Type. So I really want to look at that. Oh yeah. Have you participated in that? I have, yeah. I've never done it in 3D, but I think this is super fun. I love all the colors and how they're so dynamic and yet they convey that it's actually an alphabet. Yeah. Also, like the reflection on those. I was gonna say the reflection. I'm staring at like it's in. Is it in a room? It It, does seem to be. Yeah. (laughs) That's really trippy. Really cool though. Yeah, and this spiral element in the foreground as well. Like the choices made here are very fun, and like the colors all work together. You would not think that these would work together, but they actually do. Right. Maybe. Yeah, we talked a lot about color palettes, and this is a mm-hmm. really unique one. Um, yeah. Definitely has that that common uh, thread of just selecting something cool and then something warm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Some really neat angles here. Yeah, and even the scene setup for like the compositions and the camera angles in this case is also very fun. Um, very zoomed in shots to show the details. I think all of that is really good. Yeah, Maybe. so it looks like they use. It doesn't say what they use. Let me see. Um. Yeah, it doesn't say. I think it it's could good be to a tag. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to tag it so um you can get featured. I think on Behan's, uh, they do some really neat features. I'm really curious about this eye. Let's look <laughs> at it. Yeah. Oh, there's a video. Ooh. Can I play it? Ooh. Okay. Yeah. That is- I think crazy (laughs) (laughs) i think it's so realistic um 
I love that there's a video to showcase like the whole thing. It almost looks like you're in a big yeah. room with like a lot of ventilator, like those window yeah. things at the top. <laughs> I don't know. How it's to a good it. idea. I wonder if that if that image came afterwards, or is it an effect, yeah. or is is it an image that was just imposed on top? Um, yeah, yeah. I have. I think the colors look I, also very fun. The yellow. No, I actually yeah. felt like the yellow was a bit frantic in the eye. So you know the yeah. the caution sign, yellow. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. You it, thought it was fun. I think it looks very, very attractive in the sense that it's bold and it lo- makes you want to look at the design. Yeah. Um, because it matches this, the color of the eye. Yeah. Let's see. I let's look it. at one of these um, sort of design brand yeah. identities. It looks like. Yeah. Ooh. So we have urban roots. Ooh, with different variations. Well, I like this more drawn one. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love Ooh, this. That this looks yeah. like a responsive. It's a very responsive logo because it has like a logo mark at the top, and then there's um, text, and then there's variations as well for usage on multiple. Like it could be an ad campaign, it could be a flyer, it could be mm-hmm. social media, it could be a yeah. watermark. I love responsive logos and I feel like this really fits in. And this could be like a festival. So if it's like a Latin jazz, um, it could be on a festival poster or something. Yeah. I think my the my favorite one is this one. It definitely yeah. feels uh, uh, like it has a lot of motion because everything mm-hmm. is like angular lines. Yeah. And yeah, it gives that energy of a Latin jazz. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I think the motion and the dynamicism in the bottom two ones I think either of those could work really well for the jazz brand. Yeah. Nice. Let's check out another one here. Well, in the chat says the eyes are great. This is the one that caught my eye the most. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the studio looks really fun. Uh, what is Wait. that? That is a very 3D. 2D oh, yes. E. That kind of oh, reminds like- me of a Paul Trani uh, stream from last week, actually. He was doing something very, very fun um, with alphabets and okay. shapes. It's it's supposed to be an, a DNA-inspired um, mm-hmm. architecture for interiors. Really cool. And I love, I love when they sh- uh, showcase any process. I think that's always mm-hmm. really valuable to just kind of follow um, your train of thought and... Um, and being able to approach a brief, a design brief. Yeah. I love that Ooh. they have also showed the whole. I actually agree that you can see part of the process and that gives you an insight into your thought process, what you really did when you were first designing it. And it's so great to include stuff like that in your portfolio because then as a client, I know what you were thinking at the very moment when you were designing things. So using yeah. the, I mean, I as a client and I, I don't know anything about design or I don't know how something's constructed. This is a great insight into seeing that you use an isometric grid for something like this. Right. And it's it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's great for for designers and employers alike because then they yeah. give they understand that you understand these systems mm-hmm. and the, the results kind of cool. That's why. Yeah. It does. I need love the an simplicity. E. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's simple and complex at the same time, which is very fun. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. Ooh, patterns. Oh, I love it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh, I love how the negative space is working with this one because it's just so it's just so good to emphasize the brand language overall. I think patterns work really well for doing that. Yeah, and I like the the more linear patterns mm-hmm. too. So. It, it's not as uh, heavy like, yeah. visually, but then you yeah. have these like two options if you wanted your brand to stay dynamic. Absolutely. And then of course, involve some photography and it's really nice to see it um, in- involved in something like this with the mm-hmm. graphic pattern on top of it. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I really am really intrigued that you know, you go from one direction. We talked about how we're, we're all like have hyphens almost yeah. um, and the different things that we do. Uh, yeah. I, f- I, I love how you have something so 3D and then you have something that's a bit um, exploring 3D, but mm-hmm. uh, in a more um, minimalistic way, I guess. 
Absolutely. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love that the domains that they're working with is really diverse and vast and um in this day and age I think that's very very it's a very good thing to have in your portfolio. I love this yeah. as well. This has like neon colors and it's also called neon so I think the very um top at the very top they showed like the two variations and then there was black and white and now there's mockups as well. I think that really emphasizes the whole package here. that he oh, designed a logo for you here? but this is oh yeah. yeah yeah this is how it's yeah. going to look in all usages i think this is really well done as well <clears throat> and also showcasing your process or showcasing the different variations of your logo on behinds are mm-hmm. the type of things that kind of help uh your work be showcased more often or be viewed more often because yeah. um you know i think often times we just want to showcase maybe the final work right but being able to show that process is really interesting um and and looks really neat when once you put it together absolutely yeah um why don't you all go ahead and give santiago a follow um there is um i think wal is going to share their link in chat if you're watching this both on behance and youtube and if you're watching this on replay or if you're watching this on live don't forget to put in your recommendations for creators to highlight for our next art spotlight um And yeah, did I say follow them? Yeah, go ahead and follow them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, thank you, Val, for putting that link in there. Um, they have an amazing variety <laughs> of work, and I love to be able to share um fellow creators' work in here. I think that's that's really special that we can look at your work and look at what all good stuff that you do. So make yeah. sure to put in stuff on your Behance portfolio or even your website. I think that that also works. But um, definitely. This- This is a nice nice little segue into what we're also doing because this also mm-hmm. had some patterns so why don't we go back to what we were doing earlier and look at mockups. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. We have about 15 more minutes left in the stream so if you have any last minute oh, questions for send you. It did. Yeah. <laughs> we have we have been having a lot of fun so I think I think it it's okay if it flew back. I think I'm going to create this one into the poster mock up really quick just i'm mm-hmm. so curious to see what it looks like and then we can jump into this color one love it yeah let's do it yeah it's really interesting to see work i i'm really inspired to kind of put up my work on behinds now more often i notice mm-hmm. um in the past it, it had been a bit of like an afterthought like do i need to put it up there but yeah. you know especially if you have a website you kind of think maybe i don't have to do it but yeah it's such a pleasure to see the entire process um once you've completed a project and see it come together I think that's like Absolutely. one of my favorite things. Yeah, I agree. I think it's really um I think I agree about the fact that if you have a website you would think that why would I need it but you would be surprised how many clients look at your um portfolio on Behance and also there are so many employers on Behance as well from the job section they immediately get redirected to your um profile and I think that's really handy to have it up to date. Yeah, I definitely have had some really nice client acquisitions there and I think that the caliber of work yeah. that um they expect is definitely uh, uh, um similar to what they they see on on Behance, which is great because then you don't have to worry about um you know having someone who maybe wants has lower standards like Maybe they don't want the cool design you created. You're likely to have a really great relationship with folks yeah. who are very, um, very uh, curious about that the same the same kind of work. Yeah, I think it Ooh, overall uh, it just gives like a very nice insight into who you are, um, and what what you do on a daily basis. This kind of matches with the flowers at the bottom there. It's fits a little bit more with the environment. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to put a it... texture to this. Um did we use the same grayscale technique in this one as well? Yeah, this is the okay. same uh one that we had before. I'm just going to replace the artwork and leave mm-hmm. all the other remaining parts so okay. that um I can have a, another option. So I'm just going to put this into the artwork folder. Mm-hmm. 
And that way I can differentiate which is which. And this is the light actually, I think. Um, yeah. Rendering light. Oh, lights. I remember it now. Oh, the reflective yeah. light on the left. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So I definitely have to change uh, the dimension there. Just add that mask on top of it. Mm -hmm. And that way it fits inside of it. Yeah. That looks a lot better. And this is probably going to have to change that this mode doesn't look as good on this one. So I'm probably going to kind of go through this here and see which one. It's interesting how it can change the color altogether. Look at this one. Yeah. 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 Or black and white. That could be a cool option for a client to see. Nice. So that there, I have another mock-up for me to be able to showcase on nice. my website. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. that's a, that's that was easy, right? Like I already had yeah. created yeah. my setup on a folder and I just can just bring it in here and make it look really neat um, in this environment. And then animate it later and make those lights glow, I guess. Yeah, or something I think fun I, like that. I love that you already had that mock-up handy. So do you ever save these mock-ups for future use or do you always create them from scratch every time? You um, Is it like customizable um, for later use? Do you save these somewhere um, or do you just always create something that is specific to the project you're working on? Actually, it's really nice to have like a good assortment to be able to mm -hmm. uh, kind of rotate so that yeah. you do have a few examples and then when this one comes along again it will don't won't look as familiar um mm. so you could still kind of ride that edge of like is it mocked up or is it real and ultimately if you can't uh, accomplish that feeling that um a shopper might have to be like wow that looks really cool in that environment or they're yeah. just so distracted because it doesn't look it just looks like a mock-up then it, it won't be the same the same effect yeah yeah nice yeah i think it's always handy to have um a selection that you can a selection of assets that you can use yeah. in the future be it like in your libraries or even with mockups that's that's a great idea yeah so i think for this one i'm going to be uh doing a select with mm -hmm. color range mm -hmm. um and so this has this really bright yellow and already like i can i can begin to select it here with this eyedropper tool and the eyedropper tool gives me a plus a minus so if i don't want certain areas selected um yeah. you can start to see it here reflected uh, it also gives it, me the option to see the image but i think the selection kind of uh, helps us be a bit more specific on where I want things to go and so I'm going to go and like select all these different variations because you can tell yeah. there's kind of like a shadow yellow here there's kind of a highlighted yellow at the very top and so that starts to collect all those different samples I love that you use this image because um, people in the chat are saying that I don't know if I could sleep with that color in the room but oh. <laughs> um, I feel like this is such a great way, like using the color range and selecting the colors that you don't need and like mask that out. It's such a great yeah. way because you have such a great contrast between the furniture and the background there that it's it's a very good way to demonstrate that. Yeah. So if we remember uh, black, black heights and white reveals, so I actually can directly choose to invert this here. So if white reveals when we press OK, all it's going to show us is the wall, right? If black hides and white reveals, and in this case, by inverting it, we are going to remain uh, with the white areas, which is the 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 bed and the plants and so, and all the, the different parts of it. So I'm going to invert it and I'm going to press OK. Mm -hmm. All right. And that has select that area. And when I click on that mask and so that has removed it and you can see here there's like a little bit of like little sections there that you can still detect and the and a little bit of yellow here that you can still detect and so you can always revisit that color range and add some more if you want to you can see how it looks in the mask version hmm. and you can see how this areas are a little bit lighter gray right so you can also do 
a bit of um, of a um, contrast. So you can actually make that black a little bit darker. And so if it's slightly gray, it's like creating an opacity. So whatever is white, that that image is going to seep through it. So just by creating it extra darker, extra black, it's going to then hide that area. So it's another kind of quick way to now you don't see you can still see the edges, right? I didn't tackle that, but you couldn't see that that um, thread of yellow that was on the back. Very cool tip. Yeah. Yeah. So I think on this one, I'm going to add one of these really cool shapes. I don't think we made a pattern of that one. I'm trying to remember which one we made a pattern of. Let's see. Uh, oh, it was this one here. Ooh. Ooh, did we just change the color for that? No, what did you uh, do? Miss it. No, I I I um selected a different pattern from one of our swatches. Okay, yeah. And yeah, this one doesn't have a background. That's probably why you don't recognize it. And it was oh, I think uh, originally this, this one. Yeah, yeah. The lines. Yeah. Lines too. I mean, yeah. we could select like something like this and just mm -hmm. expand it too. It doesn't have yeah. to be uh a direct um, pattern to go on the back mm -hmm. that could be kind of gigantic i think this could look fun mm -hmm. that bounding box usually you have the image like just um mm -hmm. edge to edge but it's all good i mean i love um, that i think this could look really cool and then you could like use these colors for the wallpaper and with like accents across the room to like, yeah yeah i mean we did have a little bit of highlights on that yellow pattern so i'm going mm -hmm. to actually uh use that and uh we don't like that yellow anyways so we're gonna convert it to yeah. black and white because we don't like that yellow it's goodbye no more yeah. But let's do kind of like a lighter version. Yeah, something like that that can help us see some of that yellow. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of that highlight. Yeah. And then just click command or control on that thumbnail of the mask. And then we're just going to borrow that selection. And then hit a little bit of multiply. Oh, I think I did the opposite selection. We want to inverse it so that the white shows on the wall. Nice. I think that's that's a very fun way to incorporate the whole thing. But um, it is that time now. It is about five minutes left. So why don't you give us oh. a quick recap of what we did today and tell us where we can awesome. follow you and get in touch with you if you want to work with you. And Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we had a lot of fun today and yesterday, actually. So yeah. you have the opportunity to check out some of the work that we did. Um, we experimented quite a bit with um, this really neat ins inspiration. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, run out of my voice already. That's how, how much we've been into this. And yeah. um, this inspiration from uh, James Webb Space telescope images and we turn it into this digital interpretation and thank you for being part of it we got to do some really neat mock-ups here on different um, spaces on wallpapers on mm. posters and on some really cool pillows uh, you can definitely check out some of my work on Behance because Behance is pretty cool, you know? So we, we've been keeping up here on Behance doing some uh, live streams also much like this, but unfortunately without Annika, which is really, really sad, but I will be keeping up with you guys out there. Uh, everything across the board is Sen Lagos. And if you do um, uh, are excited about any of this work and you feel inspired to, um, get a print of your own you can always uh find those prints available on salongos.com that's brilliant yeah why don't we uh, look at the patterns one more time and look at take a look yeah. at them before we say bye yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah so some of these might actually make it to the shop which would be really cool i'm really inspired by that mock-up we just created 
specifically. Yeah, I, think, I think I really love the wallpaper and the artwork, like these two, the ones that you created, Cosmos and the other one. I think that the favorite one is also my favorite. <laughs> yeah, the, But, the Cosmos, um, this one. Yeah. Yeah. But I love that we learned so many new techniques of making mock-ups today and yesterday alike with all the blend tools and um, just using one single technique in multiple different ways and experimenting and not being afraid of doing that. So thank you so much, Sin, for showing us yeah. your workflow and a different way of thinking and exploring um, the same tools that we use in our everyday life, but maybe you just are too afraid of doing it. So um, yeah. yeah, thank you so much for joining us here on Adobe Live once again. For you all joining us in chat, thank you so much for being here, asking all the amazing questions that you have. And um, stick around for the XD challenge right up next. But Adobe Live will be back tomorrow with our evangelist for a full day of masterclasses, followed by a new episode of Office Hours with Andrew Hawk, Rattle and Nick Longo. So stick around for all the fun this week and we will see you next time. But bye for now. Bye. Thank you.